aus der Regierung. <lacht> Von Fester und Co. GmbH. Um, over to you. So, um, I was uh, coming in today and I saw that uh, everybody of you would like to take care that everything goes right. And when something goes wrong, that's why we are coming in, because we are a marine insurance broker and we are specialized in marine insurance for fresh produce. We see, for fresh produce, we see fruit and vegetables. Flowers can also be insured, but uh, we are more uh, experienced and more skilled in um, fresh fruit and vegetables. First of all, I want to introduce our company, and I will give you a little bit of overview about the risk exposure that some of exporters or importers may have. Then we see what you can do or which uh, tools you have for risk management and what insurance, how insurance can help you. And then we go into details what is the coverage of the policy, the benefits of the contract, and at last claims management. What is the insurance broker, at least the German insurance broker, doing in the claims management? Because uh, as far as I know, in, uh, German brokers are worldwide the only brokers that are authorized to handle claims. All other brokers in the world are, let's say, broking, but not, do not handle claims. This do the marine insurance company. Well, uh, Fester & Co. is a company that based in Hamburg. It was founded in 1920, so in two years we will have our centenary. And uh, we um, opened in Santiago de Chile, South America, as first German broker in own office. The German market is uh, very familiar with marine insurance for fresh produce, and um, we offer a wide coverage that you will see after that. Uh, and um, as first German broker, we opened uh, one and a half years ago our own office in Santiago de Chile. Maybe you ask why Santiago de Chile? What was the idea? Well, Chile is the largest uh, fresh food exporter in the world. That's one point. And the other point, it uh, gives for companies um, stable economic and political conditions. So this was the one, two points. And the third point is that from Santiago de Chile, you have a two-hour flight to Argentina, for example, four-hour flight to Lima. So you can cover perfectly the um, South American continent. We are, as I said, a leading broker in marine insurance for fresh produced, have experienced professionals. In our Hamburg office, there are 25 people working on that. Um, as I said, we have in-house claims handling and management, and we have worldwide cli clients. I will show you in the next, where we have our clients to see that we nearly can cover the world. There are some countries that have restrictions where you can only buy insurance locally, but most of the countries where we are, they can uh, buy the insurance abroad. If there's any questions, please um, don't hesitate to ask. So now we're coming more to details. Um, what risk exposure you may have as exporter or importer? First of all, you have contractual agreements and obligations. If you buy something, there's a contract. Even if it's verbally, even if you do it by email, or even if there's a formal contract, there are obligations. And one of the obligations is who will take insurance. You have to decide or to realize who will take insurance. Exporter, importer. So from there, you have an obligation to cover the transport or not. One thing is that you will cover with, the, or you have financial risk. What happens if the goods don't arrive sound? who's running with the financial risk. The exporter who produced the goods, he has losses when the goods arrive not found. Or the importer when he takes the risk. And of course, the main issue is that you know, never know what will happen during the transport. I will give you, when we come to coverage, examples what can go wrong and what should, should not go. But well, in the end, for that, the insurance is there. Risk management. First of all, you have to know what is my uh, risk exposure and evaluate the risk exposure. Do I need insurance? I don't need insurance. Who will take the insurance? What can happen? 
Also, one thing is what you do when you evaluate the situation is, can I transfer the risk that my company has to another, say, source insurance company, for example? <laughs> And you have to evaluate when you do risk management what coverage is adequate for me. Do I need really the wide coverage that is offered? Uh, can I have a, a smaller coverage or maybe a coverage um, that is not so wide? Now we come, I think, to the interesting part of the presentation is what can go wrong. First of all, all marine insurance have coverage for general average. I don't know, is anybody familiar with this? No, no. no. okay. <laughs> That's what the answer I want to hear. <laughs> uh, no, what general average is um, uh, one thing that uh, could happen when, let's say, the ship is not more, or ca cannot continue with this journey. We had uh, two weeks ago um, a case where a ship leaving um, the port of Callao collide with. Um, Fisher boat, well, the, sh uh, the fisher boat capsized, and the uh, ship has to go to the port to evaluate if there are damages or not. And of course, then the authorities, um, first of all, uh, had to uh, see what happens. This could be a positive general average, which means that the ship can't continue the journey. What happens? In that case, happens that you have to sign a guarantee. General average means oh, the all parties involved in the transport, the ship owners, the cargo owners, and the charterers have to participate on the possible rescue of the vessel. That means money. You have to pay. If you don't have an insurance, you have to pay, put it from your own pocket. means you have to sign a guarantee, and then you have to advance money to rescue the ship, or maybe to uh, um, liberate the container to load it on another vessel that the vessel uh, that the journey can continue so this is a really important thing for marine insurance if anybody's asking you marine insurance the first thing that you must see or know is i have to have coverage for general average because this happens then we have of course uh, problems of revituration it's uh, say the 90 percent of the damages due to failure of the refrigeration then we have in now um, uh, nearer times we have then CA failure. You know that ethylene is a possibility, or we were talking about the possibility how to preserve or to extend shelf life. CA is also one thing that, um, or let's say, one method that is uh, giving here to um, extend the shelf life. So also this can fail and at least damage the food. And then we have another issue is that delay. We are talking here about a product that lives and has, the, uh, irrespective of the um, product, a certain shelf life. If you have a delay in transport, then the goods can be damaged. We are talking here about mostly sea shipments. Our policy also covers air shipments. There we only cover delays, because you know that refrigeration is most not possible, but if a connection is failed or the goods is delivered not on time, then it also can be damaged. So this is also covered under the policy. What we have, I heard that we have some persons here from Chile. We have strikes, and Chile had, I think, in 2013, 2014, Two, uh, t two strikes within nine months. What happens there is the goods are in the port. The goods are in the refrigeration, but they will be not shipped. So the shelf life is reduced. This is also covered under the policy. We have risk of nature. We have, let's say, bad sea. We have some containers that, that can go overboard. And this is also covered there. Then we have earth and sea quakes. I come uh, uh, back again to Chile in 2010. We had a huge earthquakes that um, uh, sh uh, has closed the port, I think, for one or two weeks. And the marine insurance market from Germany paid between 10 to 15 million dollars for these damages. We're talking about 
damages due to failure of refrigeration because when you have an earthquake, all electricity is not working and that's uh, what at least happened. Um, then you have sea quakes. Well, the so-called tsunamis can also happen and are covered. We have one thing that's also important maybe for banana importers or exporters, the um, issue of drugs in Spain. Sometimes in the harbors you will find containers where the drug is um, found and this um, has the consequences that the goods are confiscated and will not be delivered. This can also damage goods because the next thing that will happen is uh, the goods will be destroyed. So this is also something that is covered and is some unique because uh, we discovered this drug seizure is most, let's say, from countries um, north of Chile where the problem is. And then we have delays in port. That means that you have delay that goods will not ship on time to their final destination. We have now in the States, for example, um, the problem or extended problem that every container has to go to an X-ray and every container has to be checked by the USDA when you have them for a short time, uh, uh, for a few days, we had this uh, so-called called, um, shutdown. This will also affect the container can't be dispatched. Nobody takes care. What will happen with the goods? Are there under refrigeration? Is there a delay? So this is all things that you have to keep in mind when you're thinking about risks that your fruit or your goods suffer. Now we come to more, let's say, uh, theoretical things you have, or we have the coverage and who is, let's say, responsible for the insurance. Mostly, the risk is on the exporter side. The exporters produce the goods and he has an interest, a special interest, that the goods arrive sound because then you will get money and they get paid. But it's not so easy because you have to agree which terms. I'm, I'm not talking about inco terms because the inco terms, let's say, they are there, but um, the fruit trade is not based on the inco terms. We have three um, usual uh, trade terms. One is FOP, that means that the exporter has the cost till the port, has the risk, and the, has to cover the goods until they will load on the sea vessel. Then we have the sales term SIF. Well, this is in Spanish. Uh, I think some of you <laughs> understand this is meant fixed price. You can agree fixed price that you will have when uh, the goods will be sailed and the importer has to pay it to you. This is then reference uh, for the cost because you have to run the cost until the goods arrived on uh, the port of destination. You're not on, uh, on uh, insurance risk, but you have to buy the insurance for the exporters. They will benefit from that. And the coverage is also until the end or the delivery uh, to the final warehouse. And then we have the most common um, sales terms. It's cons consignment. That means that the exporter has the risk until the end of arrival of the goods to final destination. How this is now reflected on the policy? You see that you have, first of all, you have all risk. This is what you, I told you, the general average, capsides of the vessel, accident of the mean of conveyance. This is all understand under the all risk coverage. Then we have special clauses for strike and war. The, we have then the refrigeration clause that's uh, going from warehouse to warehouse, how we call it. And then we have some um, delay clause. This is um, only for the time that the goods are on the airplane, on the vessel, because you get schedules. You get when, when you book a container, you get a schedule when the container should arrive at part of the destination. And when you book a flight, well, everybody of all knows us that we get a schedule when we have to enter the plane, when there's transshipment, and when we arrive at our port, airport of destination. 
Any questions? No. Please. What percentage of claims actually get paid out? Sorry? What percentage of claims yes. get paid out? Um, well, it depends. You know, you get uh, paid uh, what you uh, pay for. That means it depends on your um, risk that you have and on the sales terms. If you have the sales and consignment, then you will get the sound market value. But the claim calculation is that uh, we, or sometimes you will get some um, income from the sales. Even if the goods arrived not sound, you get income. So this has to be deducted from the uh, insurance sum. We call it insurance sum. Um, maybe I can give you an, an example. I would put it uh, very uh, short. You have the insurance sum. Well, this could be, as, as I said, the market price or the SIF value of the goods. Then you have the sales. And then you have the rest. This is the, I put, let's say, indemnification. Yeah? So this is what you get paid. But, excuse me, but you can also have a, a, um, agree a deductible. That means that you have to put or uh, um, uh, some self-retention. So you have to pay something uh, to uh, get, let's say, um, um, an other uh, tariff, to say to some extent. It's very uh, common that in marine insurance policies for fresh produce, we have a so-called deductible. That means that this is an amount that you have to take uh, on your on your behalf and the rest from the indemnification. So the what you get paid is, uh, depends on, on the sales terms that, that you agree. If you mean uh, from the claims that we have, how many get paid? Well, it depends on, on the cause of damage because if everything goes fine and the goods arrived sound, there is no uh, insurance claim. You know what I mean? This is maybe uh, another um, reason that the goods didn't arrive sound. So we have to focus on what do you have uh, covered under this policy. And th there are named risks, refrigeration, delay, strike. So this is uh, the main issue that is um, covered under the policy. Goods will arrive, or some goods uh, arrived not sound, but there is no refrigeration problem, there is no delay problem. So what is the reason? No, no, because the, you have no covered it risk. It has to be a problem. Yes, it has to be, an, as we said, named risks. Yeah? If everything's go fine and the, uh, the goods are rough, uh, not sound, what is the reason? It's nothing that's covered under the policy. Uh, what's the Sorry. Uh, yeah. <coughs> yes, I've got a question about intermodality. Um, we see uh, increasing uh, opportunity for uh, produce, let's say, of Latin America being shipped to port by rail. Now, as far as I know, the shipping companies that operate certainly out of Latin America will not uh, basically require the shipper to take care for the shipment of the cargo, whether if it's not in containers, to the port, so that's their responsibility. The question is, with intermodality, an increasing stuffing of containers in land, who is responsible if there anything goes if anything goes wrong in the intermodal leg from, let's say, uh, halfway up the Amazon Amazonas to the ports? Uh, the next Brazilian ports, whatever, wherever it is, northern ports in, in Brazil, and then there's a shipping leg. So who's responsible for the intermodal and the shipping side? And do you cover that? Yes, I, I can um, uh, answer with yes. You see that um, uh, here in, in this, uh, the extension of the coverages. So it's beginning from warehouse to warehouse. We had, for example, covered shipments by sea to Los Angeles, cherries to Los Angeles, and then flying uh, by airplane to China. 
is also covered. You have two, tra two, two let's say, uh, steps. The first step is the C shipment, and then you have the S shipment. So what we cover is also the inland transport and the transport after discharge of the vessel. So you have a, co a coverage from house to house. The only difference, and this is something that I would like, you have uh, warehouse to warehouse the refrigeration because it's refrigerated from the beginning until the end. But we do not cover delays, let's say, before or after discharge because we have no schedule. To cover delays, we need a schedule. And if the schedule is not met, then you have coverage. We have also to say that we have some so-called deductibles there for sea shipments. You have to have a delay of more than four days because, well, even if it's a perishable product, it can withstand some delays. And for uh, air shipments, we have a delay of 12 hours. So if the delay is within this time frame, the coverage of the policy will be not activated. After that, yes. Questions? More questions? No questions? Well, okay. I didn't thought that it would be so easy. <laughs> we, uh, I mean, I've got a couple of other questions, but I do want to ask them. Okay, afterwards. Okay. So, what is the benefit uh, for you uh, having a contract? First of all, um, you will negotiate the premium, or we will do this. You all this risk after we make a risk analysis. We know what is uh, the needs that you have, and then we can do the negotiation. We can do the placing, and what we also do is the training. Because, as I said, I thought there would be more question, and uh, this would be more difficult. But well, I'm. Uh, happy that it's, it's insurance seems to be so easy. I need uh, at least uh, uh, five years to understand the policy in complete, so <laughs> that's, that's okay. Then we have, uh, of course, then we will trace every claim. We will trace also what happens, where are the problems. And we will take care of the pro or program because marine insurance policies for perishables can run out of let's say, um, run out of, of the, the interest of insurers. We have, as I, as I told you, we had this uh, uh, str strike event or this earthquake event that's caused uh, millions and millions of um, dollars to the insurance company. It's not an attractive risk, so we have also to be careful how to treat this program and we also have to look for alternatives. Because once the marine insurance pay, who caused the damage? Who was the one that didn't put the refrigeration right? Who was the one that had a delay? So we have to go after the shipping lines or the um, um, airlines, and that's also one thing that we do. This is, this is also was something was felt under care of program. And then I will be I will do this really fast the claims management because this is something that we do in-house but only for your understanding is that there are several steps that um, are going through this claims management that means first of all we need a claim notification afterwards the consignee normally has to act in on your behalf or on behalf of the exporter and provide every necessary documentation so that the surveyor can go and inspect the goods it's really important for this insurance, we need to inspect the goods. We need to know what, in which condition they arrive, um, and to retrieve all information. After this, well, of course, there is an internal claim number. We will send, we will receive then the preliminary report that will provide it to our insured. He will review it. Maybe there is some information to be added. This is also will be done by us when we have done the whole information regarding the cells, the um, uh, documentation, then uh, we will, uh, also we will fi uh, issue a final report, we will get this final report, we will review it, we'll send it to underwriters, and then they will pay or not, depends on the circumstances of the claim. 
We send a monthly summary to our insured and uh, what also is done by the insurance company, as I told you before, the recovery, because this is a really important issue to balance the policy. That's all. Thank you. Uh, I've got one, one more question to you straight away. Um, Han Jin. Yes. Uh, Han Jin uh, is a container shipping line, the seventh largest container shipping line that went under last yes. year. Yes. With a, about, I think, 7,000 reefer containers, yes. at least, that have been either arrested literally in ports or arrested at sea. Now, is, was that an issue that yes. has affected yes. you? Yes, and it was. It was. It was an issue, yes. We had several exporters that, uh, that the containers were, let's say, uh, left uh, in ports somewhere in the world, and then uh, we had to arrange, because one thing that you have to uh, also know is the insured is obliged to minimize the losses. That's one, imp one important thing. So what we have done or what we do with them together is to look for a possibility to sell the goods or to transship it to other shipping lines that it gets to a final destination. And we had, uh, I think, three or four exporters from Argentina that were involved with this, and uh, it was the trade, I think, uh, to Asia. Mostly, Nanjing was doing uh, transport to Asia. And um, we could save the, the cargo, but it, it is our costs involved. There are other issues. Well, I don't know if, um, if we sh should go to this extent. We have issues, for example, cold treatment. I don't know if somebody knows from you what cold treatment is. Anybody knows what cold treatment is? Well, I know. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm asking the audience. <laughs> anyway, so cold treatment means that, for example, China and the USDA requires that fruit that goes in is free of pest, and you have Two options. You can fumigate it, Chile is doing this, or you have to go undergo cold treatment. That means you have the goods have to travel for a certain time, um, depending on the product, under a certain temperature. What happens is that maybe when the goods arrived, you want to uh, when the goods arrive to the USA, then you, the USDA says, sorry, cold treatment failed. You have two options. You can undergo the cold treatment. For example, citrus, it's, it's, it's going by five degrees. It has to go with zero degrees. It's exposed to, uh, to let's go to uh, 14 days, zero degrees. Will you go uh, another 14 days and risk that the goods will be damaged? Or do you see, think, OK, what can I do? I can go to Canada. This is also something that's covered under policy, because it's to minimize the losses. Or, or to add it, basically, I think one, one, one should explain that cold treatment is determined per product, per port pair. In other words, if you got, let's say, uh, from Cape Town to uh, Tokyo, uh, it says, I don't know, 15 days within a temperature band of X. And if it falls under, you've got chill damage. What's the problem that we talked about yesterday? And if you go over, either, I mean, the USDA equivalent, I don't know what they called in Japan, they will say they will refuse it. You could call this a trade barrier. It could well be. The question is, it's actually a real barrier to trade. And cold treatment is therefore a very important issue that should, should be, it's become a, more of a... You know, well the, the thing is that even if the container is working fine, you have a problem. You have probes. The USDA require probes, and the probes can fail. Even in, if the probes fail, the USDA says, sorry, you didn't comply with cold treatment. Then you have a problem. As I said, going 40 days more, if you have grapes, it's no problem. If you have citrus, what do you do? And we had also examples that when you have goods going to the west coast of the US, there is no possibility to make a, a cold treatment, or let's say, to start cold treatment again. What would you do then? Now, what they're doing is they're doing cold treatment in Panama. Or, if they didn't cold treatment in Panama, you have to go where? Canada? Japan? Where else? So, these are the real problems that, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, fruit traders 
uh, are facing, and that's something that is uh, covered under the policy. It, it's, it took time. It took time to, 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 to get, let's say, this policy to the level we have now, because, of, of course, as um, every industri industry is developing, we also have to be developed. Five years ago, nobody knows about cold treatment. Then Peru came in, and everybody was talking about cold treatment. What will happen? What will so? So this is a little bit what we also uh, tried to uh, to do, or to let's say, to have exchange with the industry. And what is, I think, also very important, not only exchange with the industry, but actually exchange with the authorities, because these these guys at the USDA, when they open a container, in comes hot air, and that can have an impact on the fruit, as we know. And that is actually one of the topics that we discussed in Berlin last week, is that if you uh, improve the air circulation in a container, you can, uh, by using a mixture of sensors, you can uh, counteract uh, the effect of door openings that happen during the supply chain. And the example that we just mentioned, cold treatment, is really on the increase. So it's yeah. another risk factor. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. Of course, the policy will not cover everything. You know, everybody of you has, let's say, a car uh, policy or insurance policy for the car. And there are also exclusions. We have to be aware of it. But uh, I hope that with my presentation, I could show you what risk do you have to think about it. And of course, please. Uh, Jose, I wanted to ask you, uh, if you guys request the usage of or recommend the usage of filters when someone is shipping some fresh produce uh, to prevent damages on the fruit in themselves and uh, now that you're talking about cold treatment also to prevent uh, frozen no. uh, refrigeration damages. I'm sorry? Refrigeration damages. No, but the chilling, chilling, chilling injury. Chilling injury. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and also after that, I want to know if for you to pay a claim that it was due to temperature or ethylene affection, um, and if it was affected by ethylene uh, because of a temperature uh, problem, do you, do you request a uh, uh, temp recorder graph or a filter uh, on, the, on the cargo? So because that affects us to all of us here. Yeah. Well, as, as I said, uh, um, we only come in if something goes wrong. Of course, we recommend that you should do. Uh, yeah. Yes, do, you, you have to, and, and this is some, something that, that we also do with what we call risk management. We have to analyze where is the problem and can, can these problems be prevent? Because I don't know, um, I will say that most of you don't want to have claims. You want to sell your goods and you want to receive good uh, product. So you don't want to have claims. So this is something. We, we are there if something happens and if something go, don't go wrong, uh, go, goes wrong. Sorry, um, I, I give you an example for ethylene. In former times, uh, Chile has um, the season of apples and kiwis was the same time. In former times, when reefer vessels were attractive, they load apples and kiwis in in a, in a vessel, and we had a claim where we discovered that they load the apples in the front and the kiwis in the back. That you will have a damage, it's clear, you know? So this is also recommendations. You have to put the kiwis in front and the apples in back because when you go, the wind is taking the ethylene away. So, but these are things that happen and where we discover this. Um, this claim uh, was uh, difficult to, um, uh, get paid because underwriters are always trying to say no. This is a, this was a mistake from from the shipper. They have to give instructions. So we had to struggle because you have influence to some point, 
but when the point is uh, or you are uh, over this point, you have no influence anymore. So this is also some some uh, some of work. Of course, we always recommend and we trust in our insured that they know how to deal with this. And there, if there are real problems that we have or that we see, then we have to talk about it because the 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 issue is how how long can you withstand say to get uh, get uh, claims paid you know is this interesting interesting for you or for for anybody i don't think so you are looking that the product is comes at the right time with the right say uh, quality at the right place that's what you're looking for yeah but when someone buys when someone buys a policy you give them like a, a checklist of the things that they need to have like yes Temp recorder, yes. ethylene filter, and blah blah blah. I mean, this is what it really concerns all about all, all of us sitting here today because we're trying to find a way to uh, increase our market share of uh, ethylene uh, filters penetration in each uh, all each of one uh, of our markets. Um, so therefore, I wanted to know if you have a requirement to pay, and again, is like is it an requirement for you to pay? To, to show a graph, temperature graph, or if you have a checklist where you include or you tell them, you know what, you need to have an ethylene filter to prevent whatever happens. I mean, just, but it's, it's for your own good. Yes, as we, at least uh, we, the burden of proof is on our side. I say always on our side because we try to defend the interest of the insured. So we need to have temperature temperature recorder, we need to have a schedule. We recommend to use uh, all possibilities to reduce the risk. As I said, there is a possibility. There are some goods where it's recommended that it should be goes with ethylene filter, yeah, to avoid, let's say, that the goods are ripening too fast, yeah. But uh, uh, this has to be seen from from case to case and from product to product. But of course, everything that redu reduces the risk is very important and can benefit you in the negotiation with uh, the insurance company. And, uh, what is the percentage of claims that you paid? Let's say for every 100, 100, 100. Yeah, but I, I think uh, he, he talked about what you will get. But I'm, I'm talking no, no. about... You know the things that it's it's. Uh, we, so if, we, if you get a hundred claims, I mean, what's the average uh, well, it, payment? It, it, it could, the, it's possible that from one hundred claims we have to pay one hundred. It depends on the goods we have. For example, uh, well, our our strongest market is Chile. We have claims and cherries with two hundred fifty, one hundred eighty dollars. One, sorry, one hundred eighty thousand dollars. If you have a complete container of cherries, is really cooked. I say cooked because the graph is own up, you will pay $180,000. So you can imagine, if you add it up, as I said, this um, um, strike claims in Chile or this uh, earthquake in Chile, $20 million. So it's not how many claims you will pay, it's, it's, it's uh, you can uh, do the amount, and it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. But you must have a percentage, you say, oh, we should pay 30, 40, 80% of when we are it's, it's, well, well, it, it, well it, it, you know, you know, what we we are always. It's difficult. Again, it's difficult. I can say sixty, and maybe it's seventy, maybe it's eighty, but it's difficult because many, many claims, or let's say claims notification, are done because you or we give you the advice. You have to um, uh, take care of your rights. You have to preserve your rights. You know, if something. If, some, if the goods don't arrive sound, you, you or the exporter wants to know why. If it's a claim for the insurance, perfect. But if it's not, he also needs to know why. Because maybe you have some growers, or maybe you have persons that you have to respond to, and you have to say, that, you know what, everything went fine. So the problem is in the fruit, I don't know. But to put, put it very simple, you know? So this is also something that happens. So we have many claim notifications, um, and they they run out uh, uh, under the policy, but percentage is really difficult. It's really difficult. Uh, can I rephrase the question in a different way? Yes. <clears throat> if you're looking at the total volume of claims that you process, yes. what percentage are perishables? Let's case that. Well, um, 
We had last year 1,300 perishable claims. 1,300. Pardon? Out of a total claim number of? Uh, uh, well, uh, in our office, I think we handled uh, 2,500 in total. So that 50%. means 50 percent. No, it's a huge. Of course, it's yeah, a huge it's amount. Because if you compare the container population and the reefer, there's basically uh, uh, the reefer containers represent six to ten percent, depending. You never really get that out of the total container population. So the reflection of yours basically is like sixty or seventy percent of the claims. You, you, you. Right. Uh, but I mean, the insurance in, in former times, in former times, where we had reefer vessels. The claims, the claims number was lower, yeah. but the amounts were higher. Now we have more claim, um, uh, claim numbers or more claims notification, but the amount is going up. Also, if you're adding the, the F rate, in the F rate, you, the, 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 the value of the cargo is, of course, lower. So this is the thing. We are, we, we are, we are really, we're, we're really, say, if, we, if we look, then we are a little bit back driven, you know? We would prefer that the reefer vessels will have a renaissance, that's the pro but that's the problem. It will not happen because today you, will, you have programs. You have to deliver every week this amount of goods because the consumer is demanding this. And this is also a little bit the problem that, it, that we have and that increases the number of claims. Two more points pointed out. In the morning we were talking about uh, people sh shipping mandarins, oranges in the hull of the ship, yes. the non-refrigerated kind of thing, and then you were some other fruit on the top of it which could probably affect the quality of fruit. Now, if it's a non-refrigerated cargo, do you still cover claims on that? Yes. The, 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 the marine insurance basically is to cover claims of cargo. Okay. We have for the fresh produce, we had to add some additional coverages, as I said, refrigeration, delay, strike, um, and um, uh, earthquake. This is, the, this is the basic coverage, you know? So for refrigeration or for, let's say, for perishable cargo, you have to have this added coverages. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to know you from you was that uh, at times when you have issues of traceability on a cargo landing on a port, and let's say going to the FTA or even the European Union ports, uh, the customs would order the entire cargo to be destroyed yes. on the cargo. Now, will that be covered under claims? And well, that would be a total destruction of all the cargo on the container. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult because... Uh, no, no, no it's, it's a good question because um, there is coverage, let's say, if, um, if cargo is confiscated. You can, for example, um, a country will not allow more to come some cargo in. This, this, this has nothing to do with transport, you know? The other thing is that if cargo comes in and they discover there is something, let's say a pest or something in, then we have an issue. Then we have an insurance issue because it's something that happened during the transport. You know, the, the, the basic idea from, for, for marine insurance is that some extraordinary events have to be covered. If nothing extraordinary happens, you have marine insurance, but it is not touched. Jose, I've got two points there. Uh, I think one of the reasons... Now it's getting interesting. Yeah, the reason, because, I mean, for example, we'll be talking about international LCL cargo. Yes. That exists in Europe, but we do not have any intercontinental LCL cargo. It's a very, very small amount. And people will say it's exactly in case of claims, you've got four or five parties owning part of a container. If, if the USDA decides to open the container, they will say, how are, you, how are the other parties be able to claim? A. The other question I was going to, the question I was going to ask you is, have you have any indication whether the, um, the use of remote container management uh, boxes uh, developed by Maersk have had any effect on the amount of claims? Have you got any evidence that the use of this technology that's been launched last year actually has led to reduction in claims? Well, if, if we're talking uh, about um, uh, sea shipments, it's um, 
m more that you have a full container load. It's not uh, very useful that you have LCL in, in, in fruit business because uh, you will load uh, one container, one exporter is loading. Of course, we have uh, some uh, containers where two um, uh, exporters will load because you don't have the, uh, the, the, the volume or maybe you're going to the, to the same receiver, but it's very low. So uh, this is not an issue for us. What is an issue, or was an issue, was, I think you're talking about Quest. Yes. So this was a really big issue because um, we had man, many claims, but due that the system didn't work. And the thing is that, of course, um, you have to believe what uh, the shipping line is telling you. If they're putting you in a container and they say it works properly, then you have to load it. So this was a real issue, but um, nowadays I think this was solved and Quest 2, this was coming next, is, is working much better than Quest 1. Can you just explain what Quest is? Because I don't think people in the audience would know what that well, is. Well, Quest is, uh, as you have to correct me, is a special uh, system that Maersk um, created for transportation of, uh, of uh, goods. That means uh, also refrigeration, um, oh, well, let's say they have developed a refrigeration system that they thought that was, would be beneficial for the shipment of uh, fresh produce. And the idea was to, 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 to control the energy consumption, reduce the energy consumption of the box and thereby benefit the, the environment. That's how they sold it. Yes. But it but no, it isn't. And you, th th there are many issues. That, yeah, there, 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 there are many issues. I don't want to uh, yeah. extend this too much because now we, we're get, really getting in details. And, um, I think it is important just to raise these questions because ethylene is only, and as I was trying to put it in my uh, uh, presentation yesterday, is one element about all the other things that can go wrong. If it, you have asked how many claims we paid, I can, let's say, put it another way around, I can say that 80% of the claims that are presented to us are refrigeration claims. So that means that the container don't work, work properly. So then you have the delay, and then you have CA. But, but what percentage? But what percentage? of reefer cargo, two problems going wrong are there? I mean, obviously that's, on, that's a percentage oh, that you is, guys will definitely this know. This, is, this, you this, is, this is a really uh, 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 difficult question because uh, we are not really aware how many refrigerated cargo is shipped worldwide. What we can say and do is we can analyze um, the claims that we have and uh, connecting them with the shipping line. Yeah, but... Um, Sometimes, sometimes you have uh, years where you have huge claims, huge number of claims, and then you have years they have no claims. So it's, it's, it's not really easy to, to um, uh, answer this question. Yeah? But I, I would say that most of the uh, cargo that is shipped by uh, refrigeration is it's arriving okay, because the other issue is that if you imagine the amount as I said, I, I, I put uh, two numbers on the table, 20 million uh, uh, of dollars of goods that is destroyed. What is wasted, you know what I mean? This could also be, let's say, if it's arrived sound, then the, uh, it was uh, many, many people, or let's say, um, it would, would benefit from this. So this is also, also an issue that we have to take into account. If we uh, see this, we, we need to reduce the claims not because the insurance company don't want to pay, because the, the, the other thing is that the, the goods, the, the value of the goods that are destroyed or wasted or um, uh, 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 not, cannot be used, it's huge. So, so just getting back to uh, the question earlier, as an insurance company, your goal is to obviously minimize your risk, okay? So why don't you guys enforce certain usage of products that you seem uh, beneficial, i.e. in certain areas, like with plums, they have special bags that force the air to flow through the plums to keep a more stable temperature in plums. Uh, the use of ethylene scrubbers is another one. Cold bags in order over the whole palate is another. Things like that, in order to minimize your risk, what do you have to actually pay out? Do you guys actually do that, or is that yes, actually that, 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 that's part of, of, of what we call claims management. We have to analyze what is going wrong, because 
also, um, let's say, something that is uh, sold to you as an innovation maybe can cause problems, you know what I mean? So we have to analyze this. And we are an insurance broker. I'm, I'm really uh, keen or I'm a specialist in insurance. So we have to exchange with our exporters. They have also to feed us. They say, okay, I have now a new product. They, they were trying. Uh, we were in Berlin and there was presented by Mr. Otto de Groot. I, I don't know if um, uh, you know it, or maybe the most part of it. And he has an innovative system for the circulation of air. This is also something that we have to analyze if this is really beneficial. Yeah? But this is step by step. Wait, 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 they can't hear you. I speak Are you, they can't hear you. I'm asking you, are you, because based on your experience and you must be encountering, encountering this on a regular basis, one of the factors of, of perishables going bad could be because of ethylene control, could be. Uh, are you actively suggesting to customers that they should incorporate some kind of an ethylene control and probably using Biocon's products, so that's what I'm to Yes. Yes, we, 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 we strongly re recommend this um, if we see that, that that's beneficial. Benefit. Again, um, I'm here as a broker. Our interest is, of course, we earn money with this, but the thing is that what is, what is your interest? You, your interest is that the good arrived sound, and you do have to do everything that this happened. If it's going wrong, then we come in. We can recommend them, of course. We, we have many, let's say, startups that it, and we uh, recommend to them or how they should proceed, of course. Additional to Dinesh's uh, saying, uh, more of a recommendation. Is it possible for you to cooperate with uh, uh, producers like Bioconservation or the others and create a best practice and reward this instead of each time you deduct something? Like uh, maybe 5%, it's, it's, uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's whatever not, it is, but call it a, a reward. It's, it's an idea. Uh, we, are, we are independent. We try to be independent. But of course, we uh, recommend if we see that products are um, uh, innovated or benefits our insured, of course, we recommend them. Yeah. The thing is, you are the one who is investigating everything because it's your job to investigate whether that data logger is there, have the certification, has the calibration, everything, everything. So you dig too much. So it's the kind of uh, outcome that expected from you that you can say, yes, ethylene scrubbing works, not bioconservation or this, but this works and it costs like five euro deduction from your insurance payment, for instance. Can it go like that and encourage people to use more? Because you are already saying most refrigerated things are already arriving at a condition which is well. So if people follow this, your, so, uh, your claims will be reduced at the end of the year and also everything will be good. So you can just share this thing to others in yes. a different way. Mine is just a suggestion, and it's simply yes. Seems you to you be know, like the, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, we always recommend uh, to well, it's it's we recommend to um, uh, practice or to use this. But the thing is that it can work or not. It not depends on the ethylene filter. It not depends on let's say that an, uh, a new system for air circulation is implemented. This is this is a possibility, but. As I said, this it can go wrong. It, it, to use this reduces the risk, but it don't exclude it. You know, so that's a little bit the, the thing that as I said we're dependent. We can recommend this, uh, and it is proven we will do. But this mean don't don't mean in in a logical way that the claims will not there because as I said, 80 percent of the claims are refrigeration. So if you put an ethylene filter in, it will not really uh, have an impact. I think it's another question. Well, it's really just considering the same theme further. If 80% of the claims are refrigeration, and from your statistics, you know that a certain make of refrigerated cabinet fails less often, would people using that get a lower insurance rate? Yes. In theory, they should. Just like if you have a car of a certain model, yes. you'll yes. pay less insurance for it because yes. the insurance companies know there's less risk 
associated yes. with that model yes. of the car. Yes, yes, of course. As I said, we, we, we have the statistic, uh, for example, which shipping line uh, has less claims than the other. And then, of course, we would recommend. We have the problem today is that how many shipping lines do we have? Maersk, Bad, Hamburg, Süd. There are five big ones. You know, so, 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 so if I say don't use Maersk, then he maybe had a problem to ship the goods. You know, because, or MSC, MSC in, in Chile, from Chile, they have uh, 50 to 60 percent of the departures. If I say to him, you know what, you can't use MSC, then he said, then I can't do my business. It's, it's really difficult. You don't say don't use MSC. But we you recommend. Say, if you use MSC, your insurance premium is going to be 20 percent more than it would be if you Of course, of course, of course. Uh, I think there's one, in there's one interesting aspect there as well. If you look at basically, uh, it's not just the shipping companies, but it's the containers. In other words, you could, and again, sort of, Maersk has got the ability, and I, I tried to answer that question yesterday, they could actually find out to perform how does Daikin compare against Carrier, Carrier against Thermocake, because they now have the possibility to track how often a container has got, got, got across the equator and at how many machine failures you've had with with unit one or unit two. And if they were to pass on this information to the end customer, we could have actually a market for incentivizing loss prevention. And I think that's what we're talking about. Yes. But that's, that's as I said, is also something what we do in risk management. Yeah. But you, you, you will get a list, you have to check the container. And if the container don't, is not properly, let's say, cleaned or so, you, have to, you can't load this. You know? So this is also something that in your own interest you have to, to do. It's, let's say it's nothing uh, from, from the other world, it's common sense. You have to use common sense. And if you use common sense, you can avoid many of, of uh, things that, that happen. If there are no more questions, uh, we'll just move on to the very final question. The final session, but before that, we'll put our hands together for. Thank you. Thank you.